What's going on, everybody? It is Carrie Digsby. And your man, Adrian Fiddle, a.k.a. Hey, money. Hey, money. It's your girl, Melissa, a.k.a. AKA People in the Dress. <laughs> and today, we are being joined by our esteemed guest. Yes. Yes, indeed. Man, really needs an introduction because I'm going to tell you, he's doing some things that's really helping us as a community, and I appreciate that. Yes, sir. We all appreciate well, that. Can we get a drum roll? And now straight from <laughs> our man, our brother, the man who's teaching us the better way of health, Mr. Marathi Howard. What's going on, bro? Peace, peace. What's going on, Shala? How y'all doing, man? All right. Man, man, it is good to have him here. Let me tell you something, man. I'm going to be straight up honest with you. What's going on, people? Thank you for joining us at the round table, following us. Um, my wife is a huge fan of this brother right here. Mm -hmm. If I could tell you the number of times she was telling me, when are y'all going to have Marathi on the show? When are y'all going to, every time we have a show, is it time for Marathi to come on? I'm like, now yeah, baby, we got a schedule. We're trying to make sure we get everybody in. <laughs> Plus, we want time because this brother got a lot of things going on. And boom, you're on. She's happy. She's watching. So thank you, brother, for joining us. No yes, doubt, man. Yes. Yeah, no doubt, man. Yeah, um, your wife, man, is definitely a queen upon queens, man. So, uh, thank you, man. Hey, you selected a great one, a wonderful one. She selected you. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to be in the right place at the right time. And booyah! I got lucky. <laughs> I'm happy and blessed. What's going on, Crystal Cox? Thank you for joining us at the round table. Oh, man. Yeah, man. I'm going to be honest with you. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to have to say it. Guys, hold on. Miss Pratina Bryson Ingram. Thank oh, you, P, for joining us. Yeah. That's my sister. She said yeah. she would. She said she would. Says we miss you. We miss you. Hey, hey, lovely people. Thank you for joining us tonight at the round table. Mm -hmm. Yo, this is going to be entertaining, man. And informative. Yes. Mm -hmm. It will be. It's not incredible. I had a, a behind the scenes look or, well, a preview on some of the information that this young man will be sharing today and yes. let me tell you it is some thought provoking information mm. y'all are going to enjoy some of the information that he brings forth today yes indeed yes indeed so bro you, you you've got to go ahead and share with everyone because i mean they're, they're starting to pop on right now everything hey what's going on damian carter thank you for joining us okay. right the round table Yo, what's going on, Miss Socialite? How are you? Hey, Miss Socialite. Miss Socialite. Yes. Socialite. So, brother, you got to talk to us about this journey. Let's talk about you, man. Share with the world who is Marathi Howard. What, what's going on, Mr. Vegan Love Coach? Uh, um, well, uh, first off, man, uh, I would like to thank you guys for uh, bringing me on to the show. Um, I'm very, very appreciative. Uh, I have a lot of respect for what you do and um, what you bring to the table. Um, <clears throat> I was born Tom Howard, Thomas Howard, actually. Okay. Uh, October 22nd, 1977. Um, my dad named me after his father and my mom named me after my grandfather. So it was Thomas Nellis Howard. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> I'm from Concord, North Carolina, and I graduated from Northwest Cabarrus High School. And then I went off to North Carolina Central University. Um, I would like to say probably before I went off to North Carolina Central University, I had an older cousin by the name of Jason Stowe. He's my um, my my first cousin, and he went off to North. He went well. He was a great, good basketball player in high school, and he went off to Asheville. Uh, to to uh, he, he got a scholarship at Asheville, and then ended up going to John C. Smith. When he went to John C. Smith, he then came into his own identity. So. Um, he was like a cousin that I looked up to. Mm -hmm. So when I would go for the summertime, you know, he would, you know, talk about the roots, uh, Grand Pool, but I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean he, he introduced me to everything. And um, it was during the time period where uh, he was such a, a, a big role model to so many people in our communities. I was like, yeah, that's my big cousin. So whatever he would bring to me, I would, I would take on to it. So it was like, yo, you should eat pork, you should do this. And I took on to that as, as, as it went on. So by the time I was going to my senior year in high school, I ended up going to North Carolina Central University. And my sister, Latisse Howie, that y'all know very well. Um, and Latisse is on our Instagram. Shout out to Latisse. Hey, Latisse, what's going on, sis? Yeah, yeah. You know, my, my sister uh, played a, a big role in me 
going to North Carolina Central University. Uh, my sister, um, you know, you know, she's like um, she's like my best friend, you know, as far as how we interact with each other on a daily basis. Yeah, so yeah. Um, when she was cheering at North Carolina Central University at 14, I knew I was going to go to North Carolina Central. Mm -hmm. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So when I ended up going to North Carolina Central University, I had uh, probably one year of a normal freshman life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like it was like, okay, go out to the club, do this, do that, do this, do that. But then it was like, uh, after that, knowledge itself hit me. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was eight, what, 18, 19. Mm -hmm. So by the time I hit 20, it was like, okay, the Matrix, take the red pill or the blue pill. <laughs> <laughs> like, which pill are you going to take? Yes. And um, I had a good friend of mine, um, Amaya Yarborough. Um, it was like, yo, we was going to Chicken Wednesdays, um, Chicken Wednesdays at No Clock Central University, where they have a, a DJ and chicken on every line. And he, was like, <laughs> he was like, yo, man, we walking up to the to the cab. He's like, yo, man, you know I don't eat meat. I'm like, what do you mean you don't eat meat? Yeah. You know, he was like, man, I'm a vegetarian, man. I don't eat that chicken and stuff. I was like, are you serious? He was like, yeah, man, and started breaking things down to me and stuff. So as we go in there, I'm like, well. I see what you're saying, but I'm still getting my chicken. I'm going to the line to get my chicken. <laughs> you know, we can talk about this or whatever, but I'm going to get my chicken. So as we went through the line, um, he got whatever he got, his pasta, fries, whatever. Right. He, he was a man of his word. And I got my <laughs> chicken, you know. Mm -hmm. So we sat down and he talked. And he was breaking things down to me, you know. And it, you know, uh, one thing about truth is uh, it's verifiable. Right. right. You know what I mean? If, if, if the spirit speaks to you about truth, it's like, okay, you can't even deny it regardless right. of how whatever you try to block out is right. there. Right. So some of the things that he was breaking down to me, um, it made me go back to my dorm after it was over with and study on it and, and read up on it. So I'm walking back and forth with my dorm. I'm like, yeah, okay, he's saying this, he's saying that. Okay, well, let me look into it. Mm -hmm. So I look into it more deeply. I look into it more deeply, and I'm like, man, okay, a lot of this makes sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I came up on an article where it said that red meat, could cause cancer back then. Right. So 21 years later, they said that meat is causing cancer. So what happened was I took heed to where I was at that point in time that made me go into my whole vegan journey and give up animals and give up, the, you know, the things that could cause harm to my body. And I, I give thanks and praises for it. And that's what led me into this journey. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to know who's in your circle. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he dropped knowledge on you, and now twenty, say twenty one years later. Yeah. yeah. Who? So, Barack, if you don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. how how was the transition from be going from meat to vegan difficult at all? Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's difficult, especially whenever um, I always tell uh, most people, especially in our communities, that you know we were raised in the region to the two in most areas. Mm -hmm. right. So. Yes. Um, I, I had chillers one time, but every other part of the animal I ate, I mean, I didn't eat deer and stuff like that, but, you know, you know, uh, saying, okay, you're going to give up animals to be able to go into a more healthier lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you're making a decision. So what happened was throughout my transition, okay, I would give up pork, right? I would yeah. give it up, right? Then I go back home and then I got a, a Wendy's Bacon Classic and I eat that. <laughs> And then that joint jam up my whole system. Right, so right. then I, as as a, as the time went on, I'm like, okay, my body is rejecting these things. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So as my body was rejecting it, it was like, okay, uh, that means that I need to give it up. And that's how it happened. So it was more of like, okay, well, all right. Um, yeah, it could be hard, but my body is telling me something. And, I, and I'm paying attention to my body. So that's how it ended up going. And, you know, the transition goes from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I spoke to someone that went vegan, and I, after they gained knowledge, um, they stayed the same thing. Their body was rejecting the food. Mm -hmm. And he took a step further to even say that our mind is so powerful that, you know, you can't unlearn when you had learned the truth. And mm -hmm. he said he feels that because his mind was given that knowledge, mm -hmm. his body, organs, everything took that on. So when he went to try to take it in, 
His body was like, no, I'm like, sorry. no, no, no. I'm sorry. No, sorry. I'm sorry. Here you go, y'all. Every episode, she dropped a little nut. Now, one more time. One more time. You can't unlearn. You can't unlearn the truth. You can't unlearn knowledge. Do you understand? Whatever you know, you know. So our mind controls everything that we have. Our whole body, our whole function. So once you learn that, like how he was, I mean, just mm -hmm. given fact upon fact, you know? Yeah. How can you tell the your rest of your body, okay, that was separate? No, your body's like, okay, no, we can't take that. Mm -hmm. So I believe it. And mm -hmm. I believe that over that rejection period yes. is what truly makes you cross over where you're like, I don't have a choice. Good point. Good point. Mm -hmm. Man, I I gotta be honest with you, yeah. I remember back in the day with that pork and stuff like that. I'm surprised my my brother from another yeah. mother, yeah, and child now, you yeah, right. yeah. But it, 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 it is, it is, it is, I mean, it is something in which you really have to, mm -hmm. once you educate yourself, and then just, you know, it, it's a progression. It's not, I think you shared it with me the last time, you're like, brother, oh, no. It don't happen overnight. You gotta take it. Yeah, you go train me in there. Of course, let Oh my God. Take time. I get one. I need a burger. You know, it's like, and I love how he. I love how he he educates because I've watched him. He educates people about it, and it's not like hit you in the face about it. It's just like, okay, let's talk about it. So this is your opportunity, brother, to talk to the masses and share with them. You know, the transition and how. You know, if you guys don't see it, man, he in the gym, man. <laughs> yeah, man. He be going hard, but it's because of his lifestyle. So that means talk on that, man. I mean, that's amazing. So take us through, take yeah. us through a routine day. What do you do when you can do you? When you can do Marathi, what is it that you do from the time you wake up? Um, well, uh, when I wake up, I wake up to my two boys. Um, I'm a single father, so um. I got to get them up and get them ready for school. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> as I get them ready for school, you know, and get them off to school, then my day starts. So um, depending on how my body feels, mm -hmm. you know, I'm getting them up at 6.15. They got to be at school by 7.20. Mm -hmm. um, either I'm going to come back and rest for another hour, or I'm going to get straight up and I'm going to go ahead and start the gym. Mm -hmm. um, but before I do that, um, when I get up, I start off with, superfoods that I bring into um, America that comes from Africa. Okay. And uh, those two powerful superfoods is Moringa, well, it's a couple of them. Um, Moringa, uh, which fights over 300 diseases in the body. Um, it alkalines the system out. And Baobab, which is one of the highest concentrated forms of vitamin C mm -hmm. that you can get for your body. Mm -hmm. Magnesium, potassium, and calcium. Mm -hmm. So I start those off in my system because I'm getting my Superfood veggie, which is a moringa, mm -hmm. that's like times 10 veggies, and then my superfood um, balba, which is like 10, like times 10 um, fruit. Okay. I get that in my system to start my system off the correct way. Um, I didn't make, I, well, it ain't, too, it ain't never TMI, but because of my system, um, I get up to one of the first things I do is have a good number two. Yeah. It's, it's like okay. it's mandatory, you know, so I, and that what you know, cleanse my system, I'll get my system started, and then I'll get my day started. So then I'll hit the gym. I'll hit the gym um, for about 45 minutes, hour and 30 minutes, that's as far, far as I go. And um, I make sure that I get a good sweat in because um, your skin is one of your largest organs. So mm -hmm. if you're not pushing those toxins out of your skin, mm -hmm. what, where are they going? You know, um, it's either gonna come out your eyes, your ears, your mouth, True. your nose your buttocks or your or your sexual organs, that those are the ways that come out in your skin. So I make sure that I hit the gym, I jog real hard, and then I hit the stairmaster and get the skin to clean it out. Um, and then after I do that, I get my day started. And uh, to be honest with you, um, when I start my day off, um, I always roll the spirit. And spirit can lead you anywhere. Um, but if your spirit is in the correct place, it's gonna always lead you in a positive direction. Right? So I um I check I check whatever um, um orders that I have coming in on my website for people that's ordered moringa, baobab, uh, sour sop, butterfly PT, and other things that we'll speak about. I'll check those. I'll get those in order. I'll go and send those off, and then I go off and I start um, doing what the Creator told me to do to the masses, and that is going and and minister the plant based lifestyle and speak to people about it, not pushing it down their throat. 
but you know, letting people know, letting people know about Moringa, letting people know about Bob, but letting people know about what it means to go back into the earth. Um, our community is suffering because we have um, we have detached ourselves away from the earth. True. And if there's anybody in the in the whole world that can that is from the earth, it's black people. Right. Our skin matches that soil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in the Bible, it says that we were made from the dust and soil. So you have 112 trace minerals in the earth. You have those same 112 trace minerals in your body. If you're not going back into the earth for those minerals, how are you replenishing your body on a daily basis? Right. And what our grandmothers and our great grandmothers taught us and stuff like that, we have detached ourselves away from. And they always told us to go back into the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, our grandmothers, all of us can think about whenever we had to go pick pork cat salad. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, put peas, yes. shut corn, mm -hmm. you know, that's what, they, they were teaching us something that we were supposed to keep going, but we kind of detached ourselves away from it. Subsequently, when we did that, the diseases that they didn't have, that they didn't suffer from, we are now suffering from right. those diseases. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, going back to what you said, on, on, when you said, what's my daily, what's my daily routine? That's my daily routine. I move by the spirit, the house spirit moves me. And I move based on the fact that I'm protected on a daily basis. And I go out there and I minister this lifestyle. And whatever comes to me, it comes to me. Knowing that I'm building a foundation, I'm building a, 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 a legacy for my boys to carry on. And uh, building up vegan love culture. That was going to be my next question. Okay. Are your sons vegan? Yes, they are. Um, I, I will say this. Um, my boys, um, when they go down to their mother, mm -hmm. uh, which is down in Texas or Sometimes even with my, with my, with my mama. So um, my boys will have fish every once in a while. Um, do I, do I uh, push, um, do I make it um, so, so strenuous on them the same way it is with me? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. And it's for reason for that. You know what I'm saying? I, um, uh, my boys are, you know, um, if, they, if, if they decide to, if they say, okay, well, mom or, or, or nana, I want fish. I don't say, no, you can't have it, X, Y, Z. I, I don't do that. My boys have a lot to grow into, you know what I mean? And I, and I understand um, because I've been there before, but 98% of their lifestyle is vegan or plant-based, okay. if, if you want to call it that. Right. You know where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I particularly, if you follow me, you follow me. I don't push this vegan lifestyle on anybody. I tell people this is what I do. Right. In our community, what's going on in our community is that we are eating so much dead animals and things of that nature to the point where we have forgotten what plants do for our system. Mm -hmm. And because we have forgotten what plants do for our system, it is our bodies are deteriorating on us. Mm -hmm. You get where I'm coming from? Right. And so as long as my boys understand that, okay, this is how dad built himself up. Whenever dad, whenever dad talks to you, whenever I speak to you, yeah, if you eat that red meat, if you eat that, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show my boys a pic of a black man or a black woman scared straight, diabetes. This is what happens when you eat this. Mm -hmm. Your leg will get cut off, you know, your arm can get cut off. These are the things that happen to you. And so I need you to stick to this lifestyle as much as you can possible. Um, your dad is a vegan. Whenever you're around me, straight vegan. But if you go to Nana, Nana might say, okay, well, do y'all want fish? I'm not going to tell my mom, hey, yeah, no, mm -hmm. it's okay. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, you're still I'm giving not. them that choice to, to choose <laughs> and to grow into their own yeah. kind of function of that lifestyle. A absolutely. As long, long as they're not uh, uh, indulging in pork, red meat, chicken, and stuff like that. Fish is, is okay for them right now. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I, I'm not going to put that type of stipulation on them. They're too young for that. Mm -hmm. That's I feel like I'm too young for that. <laughs> well, people are chiming in about it. Oh, it really is. Really is. Yeah, they're chiming in. They're, they're definitely appreciating their hinging on every word that you're saying. Martha, your sister says she's proud of you. Yeah, thanks, big sis. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a. Uh, Bettina just mentioned each year I give up meat for Lent 4040 with the intention of continuing the path. However, I find myself eating more carbs and alternative options. She notes, or oh, questions rather, how do you recommend a safe and healthy transition? Mm -hmm. um, before we get to that question, uh, oh, okay. So Miss uh, Lady O says, hello. 
Peace. Yeah. Um, man, they, they chiming in now, man. This is crazy. Um, of course, they're saying, oh, this uh, socialite says the black community has a very hard time understanding the vegan um, vegetarian lifestyle. She's a vegetarian. Didn't know that. Thank you, sis. Um, she says she's been that way for about five years. I mean, blacks look at me crazy because I don't eat meat. It's really unfortunate because they don't understand that eating animal has a negative impact on their health. Mm -hmm. So another question has popped up. So before we get to the other question, I want you to answer that one in regards to what Patina just asked about a transition. transition. Okay. Yeah. Um, what I can tell Patina the best best way possible is that um, there are so there are certain uh, vegetables and fruits that we can put in our system on a daily basis to be able to give our bodies what they need. Um, I will speak for an, for an example, an avocado, just an avocado in general. Mm -hmm. An avocado gives the body so many nutrients that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. um, the avocado, when you look at the avocado, is shaped like a female who's had a baby. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it takes nine months to be able to develop a, a pure avocado. Mm -hmm. The same way it takes nine months to develop a baby. Uh -oh. um, mm -hmm. So... Putting just an avocado in your system on a daily basis can give your body the certain nutrients that you need. Mm -hmm. um, when you speak about a transition, the problem that we're running into is that we have been eating a, a, um, a certain lifestyle for so long mm -hmm. that we, our minds and our bodies are used to eating meat, 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 meat. Mm -hmm. So right. people are like, well, where do you get your protein from? Where do you get yes. this from? Where do you yes. get that from? Every plant, every plant in the earth gives you protein. Okay. Actually, matter of fact, tell me when the last time you heard of somebody that's protein deficient. Never. No. Have you ever <laughs> seen somebody in the hospital with protein deficiency? No, 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 no. It no. doesn't exist. But someone is, because you've been fed this through media, and because your mind is a certain way, and your body feels a certain way, you feel like, okay, well, I'm lacking this, I'm lacking that. No, you're not. First of all, your, your, your stomach is like a, it's no bigger than your fist. Mm -hmm. But we have been eating a certain way for so long, we got three full fists that make a stomach. Whoa. So when you speak about a transition, you're thinking about, okay, well, what can I do to substitute all this meat and other stuff that I know that's not how it's going to be? Our bodies were made up to eat a certain amount of food just for, because you eat to live, you don't live to eat. One more time. You eat to live, you don't live to eat. Right. So we have to get over the thing of I'm not eating enough. I'm not getting enough. No, it's your body. It, you have to train yourself and train your mind and your body to be like, okay, I am getting enough. That's the reason why I'm, I'm pointing out to the sister Bettina that your transition is very simple. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. If you go into any farmer's market, you go anywhere, you can get some some peas, some uh, greens, uh, some uh, cucumbers, uh, some onions, just like what grandma used to do. Listen, how many times did our grandma used to, in, in our communities, they used to have beans, cabbage, and cornbread. Yep, mm. that's true. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, that's true. all the time. We have forgotten that way. And, and not only have we forgotten that way, we have eaten ourselves to a point where that's not satisfiable for us anymore. Mm. You get where I'm coming from? Yeah. So the transition is really more easy than what you think. This is something we, we have never, our, the African ancestry has always been majority plant-based. We may have had animals every once in a while, but that animal would last us for two to three months. We wasn't lined up eating church's chicken every day. KFC. <laughs> but we wasn't lined up doing that. Yeah. We had plenty of sun, we had plenty of land, and we had plenty of water to grow our food. And they used the meat for seasoning more than well, for consumption. Like I grew up where mm -hmm. yeah, we shut those purple hole mm -hmm. peas and so they would have like meat in it for seasoning. Mm -hmm. But you know, that was it. Mm -hmm. We didn't have like hunks of this and hunk, like you said, as we had chicken, you know, and I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama. Let me put that right. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I had ham, I had chicken, you know, we might have had rabbit, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. we had beef, you know, 
but our sides were plentiful. They mm -hmm. they made some of the majority of our plates. I shouldn't say didn't meet it. Let me be honest that way. So we would have black eyed peas, we have greens or cabbage, rice, and then bread, baked cornbread every day or homemade biscuits. Mm -hmm. And you got a piece of meat, like mm -hmm. a piece, literally. But your size made up your plate. Now the meat makes up our plate. And then we have a scoop of size. And that's it, maybe one. So we definitely have to change how we have to retrain what we're doing. That that's crazy. I'm like imagining, remembering my how our plates look. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So, so what was what was the second question? I'm, I got, I'm, I got, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure oh, I, I, I want to make sure I ask the sister the question in correct way. Um, what I what I what I want you to do, sister. I want you to go to any Trader Joe's, any um, Earth Fair, any Whole Foods, and I want you to look for something called coconut aminos. Mm. It's a um, it's a it's a it's a it's a bottle about this big, and I want you to take that. And I want you to put that on your vegetables when you steam them, when you cook them, or do whatever. It's going to make your vegetables taste like voila. And you know, getting that seasoning on your vegetables, you be like, okay, it's more easy than what I think because in people's minds, like, okay, what do I eat? What do I eat? But there's millions of fruits and vegetables that you can eat, but it's a way that you want to, of course, season them and things like that so they taste good for you. So don't forget coconut aminos and let your turn, let your transition be what it is. Don't get so caught up into the fact that, oh, um, I'm not getting this or I'm not getting that. You're getting what you need. You're just going to have to be able to train your mind and your body back to the original way we used to eat. I hope I answered your question good enough. That was very good. Yeah, I think she got that one. That was real good. Okay, so we got two more. Um, looks like uh, Terry just asked two questions in regards to... Okay, so the first one she has is, why don't vegans eat unfertilized eggs? Um, well, first off, um, an egg is a, uh, it's a, it's a baby embryo. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a dead baby that came from a mother. So the first reason why a vegan would not eat that is because it's a it's a it's a it's a dead baby. Like, so you know, it's like it's like it's like take it's like taking it's like taking your egg that you go through a menstrual cycle with that comes out of you and you ask somebody to eat it. I'm just being honest with you. Not I, I I'm I'm not being hardcore. I'm just telling you that you have to realize that that that's not an egg. That's a dead embryo. It's a dead embryo. It's a it's a dead it's a dead life. It's a dead baby or whatever baby you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So that's the main reason why vegans would not eat that. Ooh, that's deep. Okay. You know what, Marathi, I'm going to tell you right now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> well, little baby chickens, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's <laughs> like when you watch it every day. You know, you know, those coming out, you know, hey, you know, you know, you know, you know, had a couple of them bad boys this morning. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. okay, so Terry, that's the that's the answer to the first question. Okay, so now here's the second question, bro. Um, shout out to Dean or Renee. Thank you for joining us at the round table. Uh, Miss Steele, thank you for joining us at the round table. Mahogany Tabidi, thank you for joining us at the round table. Um, PC. Yeah. Uh, okay. So Terry just asked, "What do you say to people who are medically the prime example of perfect health who eat seafood or lean meats?" Um, I would say this: um, if your colon, if you feel like your colon can take that, um, I would beg to differ. Um, eating any lean meat or eating any animal, it builds up cholesterol in the body. Cholesterol, the only way you can get cholesterol in the body is through dead animals. And as one continues to eat it, their blood, their blood vessel will go from here, which blood is flowing freely, to there, to there, to there, to there, to there. It's only a amount of time. And once that cholesterol builds up in your system, it causes what? For you to attack your heart. Not a heart attack. You attack your own heart. If it goes up to the left side, it causes a stroke. If it goes down to the penis, it causes a man to be impotent. So I sincerely myself think and understand that anybody who eat, now she asked the question, she said someone who eats lean meat or they eat seafood. 
is that all they're eating. Because if that's all they're eating, there's no way possible they can be healthy. They are also eating fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. You get me? Gotcha. If 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 we compare the two lifestyles, I'm telling somebody that I can sustain my life eating fruits, vegetables, grains, legumes, and beans. I would challenge anybody to eliminate that and just eat dead animals and see how long you survive. What people want to what people take out, they want to say, okay, well. All right, what do you say of somebody that's eating lean meat and seafood? That's not all they're eating. They, they're getting something out that earth. The earth is the most important thing that you can ever go and get something from. Mm-hmm. You get me? Gotcha. Nobody in their right mind, unless they're a fool, is going to eat nothing but dead animals, dead carcasses. I'm just being honest. And they're limiting probably that meat that they're taking in, mm-hmm. you know, as well. So, um a lot of people are, my cousin's doing the keto diet right now. Mm-hmm. Um, we are, they're eating meat, they eat meat, they have protein, but they don't have any carbs. Mm-hmm. So I think, Terry, when you have people who are doing that, you have to look at what their actual diet is because everyone has a, 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 a medley of what they're doing. So mm-hmm. you have people who are eating seafood and lean meats, mm-hmm. but they're not taking a lot of carbs. They're doubled on their greens Mm -hmm. and their fruits. So it's kind of like they're kind of, to me, I feel like the keto diet, it helps you. That might be a transition like Mm -hmm. thing, but you start less and less than your meat, keep increasing your greens, Mm -hmm. your grains, and that might Mm -hmm. help you go all the way vegan Um, because you do still get that meat, but you still have like a certain ounce that you can eat. Mm-hmm. So you have to make sure that you are watching the intake, but I bet you they're exercising. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. They're also, they're drinking certain, well, I, I watch my cousin. She has this water. She has this, uh, like this nutrient that she puts in her water when she's drinking. So there's all these other things that are adding mm-hmm. to their body mm-hmm. and their diets. So when you're looking at them, they're like, oh, well, I'm not vegan. Yeah, but look at everything that you're doing vegan life. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You have to look at what everything else that they're doing com- is coming out the earth. Yep. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So. You have to take that into consideration, Queen, when you speak about that. Good point. Good point. Go ahead, bro. Uh, I got people coming in. You go ahead first. Oh, okay. Good. So you said that you've been in this life for about 21 years, roughly. Yeah. So what were some of the, um, it may not even have been immediate, what were some of the benefits that you saw right off? Well, um, well, first off, I used to have bad allergies. Mm-hmm. Uh, my allergies used to be very, very bad, um, you know, they talk about nosebleeds, um, mucus all over the place. You know, it, it was bad. Yes. And I and I didn't realize that that my allergies were happening because of dairy products. Mm-hmm. You know, I was an athlete in high school. I played. Um, I was a starting quarterback and starting point guard. So during football season, I used to drink a lot of milk and I used to eat a lot of peanuts and stuff like that. And I used to be like, man, why am I waking up and mm-hmm. nosebleeds? You know mucus all in my eyes and stuff like that and i didn't realize it until i read a book called milk the deadly poison by um i think one is it david cohen um it was a book i actually posted on my facebook page and it started breaking down what milk does to the body it's called cow's milk for a reason it's for cows mm-hmm. it's not it's not for humans and so after i eliminated that out i was like whoa okay I'm seeing a difference because I used to have, I didn't have bad eczema, but in my family, on my dad's side, eczema can run pretty bad. So I used to get patches every now and again, all over. And then whenever I eliminated eliminated those things, the animals, I noticed those patches cleared up. You get where I'm coming from? I noticed that uh, nagging injuries that used to cause me a lot of problems with the hospital, I wasn't having those injuries anymore. You know what I mean? Or, or those nagging problems anymore. Um, my, um, my temperament calmed down tremendously. You get me? My thought pattern and how I looked at life was more level-headed. Mm-hmm. Um, I always say this, the more natural you eat, the more natural you will behave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Within our communities right now, and I am here to say this bar down without a fact, if you replace our convenience stores with gardens, we would be a lot less violent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Our kids would think a lot more clearly. Mm-hmm. 
they would not be having ADHD problems mm -hmm. if we eliminate fruit loops and all this sugars and all this artificial flavors and all this type of stuff we would get some very calm intelligent children our children yes. are already very intelligent but because of what is being put into their system from people from everyone people just just don't know they grew up on this type of stuff we are hindering their thought process our children go into the school system mm. and they can't sit down and they can't behave the correct way not because well first of all the, the education is they're too smart for the education also they got so much white sugar and artificial flavors in them they can't sit down and be still well, don't you can't, let's not let's not leave out what did they get in school that's right in the school lunches that's that's exactly Ooh. right that's exactly right you're 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 loading your children up with all these sugars these artificial sugars these artificial flavors and stuff like that and they know what's going on so next thing they do is they tell you that your kid is not sitting down he can't think right so let's put your kid on a drug yep mm. you get where i'm coming from keep them yeah. sedated suppressed keep them sedated or suppressed so yeah um that that aspect of going back into the earth and and eliminating certain things out of our system will allow us to be able to uh function the correct way i'm gonna tell any parent out there that let their children eat school lunches and your children seem to have gotten round take them off of the school lunch for 30 days okay. our daughters at the time when they were in elementary um they got round and you know like you said you're learning oh you're tired oh they're just that's their baby weight oh they're you know oh they'll slim out once you know they get into middle school or once they become missies you know da, da, da. Mm -hmm. and we took them to the pediatrician and she was like okay they both like were pushing a 20 pound gain from the previous year Mm -hmm. And she said, are they in the school lunch? I said, yeah, you know, okay, you know, occasionally. She said, no, this is more than occasionally. And said, okay. I said, well, they probably are. They're eating, eating it because it got convenient. Mm -hmm. And she said, told them, told me, told my husband, no school lunch for 30 days. Mm -hmm. My daughter's dropped 20 pounds mm -hmm. in a month from not consuming all of those preservatives and mm -hmm. hormones that they're pumped into that food that food is frozen mm -hmm. and it is shipped out mm -hmm. that is not fresh food given and delivered to schools every day mm -hmm. how often do you see a truck at a school mm -hmm. how i think about it how often do you see a delivery <laughs> truck at a school probably little than that exactly yeah. so we were like no more school lunch and so it just took a little time and as they got older i didn't have to make the lunches and they were able to do that. So, you know, gain the knowledge, definitely telling parents, like, not just have guinea pigs on your kids, but mm -hmm. just do that with your children. I promise you, you'll see, okay, this man is not lying. This, if they'll do that for them, imagine what, if, once you stop putting that in your body, imagine what will happen. Um, I, want, I want to make something clear uh, um, to the parents, especially the single black mothers. Um, this what we're talking about right, right now it this getting this health thing right for our families and for our children this falls on the single black mothers okay it, it falls more on the wives than anybody else i'm gonna tell you why within our culture the women were always the first teachers the doctors and the dietitians dietitians to the family right so they did the research and had the understanding of what was needed to feed the kids to, or the, the family to be able to keep the family sustained. Mm -hmm. You get me? Remember, there used to be something in high school called home economics. That's right. <laughs> What's that now? It's not home economics. Oh, okay. It's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that men couldn't take this class, but it was mostly females that took this class right. because there was always something where it was what they have taken away from us as a as a community is that. It is a job being a mother. It's a mm -hmm. job in her. The house is a job, a queendom. Yep. It's a queendom. They have made it now look out to be like, oh, well, she can't be this way. I'm not saying that a woman can't be independent, go out here and make a way and this, that, and the third. But in our communities, mm -hmm. most of the black men are locked up, uh, dead, or whatever, other, whatever else you want to come up with. It's, mm -hmm. So it's only the black woman who can be able to make these changes to be able to enforce these changes into our children to break the cycle. What I mean by breaking the cycle, sisters, my, my mother used to tell me, 
you will eat it before it eats you. That's right. It has to be that. It has to be that hardcore. Once you find out how this lifestyle is going to affect you to make a better change within within your families, the only way we're going to break the traditions is by putting the right foods there and enforcing it. So, That's it. So check this out. Teresa Copeland just chimed in. She said there were field peas, lima beans, sweet peas. Yeah, you had that at least three times a week. Yes, ma'am. Collard green, collard greens, poke salad. Yeah, we call them peas, limes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still eat it. You might come. You might have corn. I don't leave out turnip greens and rutabagas. That's what you call good evening yeah. cook when they serve now. And you're right. That's why I call. You have diabetes, obesity, but if they learn how to grow their own vegetables, mm -hmm. I think that's a takeaway of so much of this obesity that's happening in our culture. Mm -hmm. She's, I can teach my one-year-old, my two-year-old granddaughters how to sing Jesus Love Me, but you bet they're helping grandmother in her vegetable garden too. That's you know? true. So I think we as a, co as a people have received the privilege to move on up and do better. And it's still a setup because we had peas three times a week because guess what? You had to wait until that was gone because you didn't have the luxury of going into the pantry or going out into the big freezer or going out to the little freezer or eating cereal because you ain't want to eat what was for dinner. You had to eat what was for dinner. That woman provided that food for her family. Mm -hmm. And as being a mother and being a wife, I charged to make sure that my family has nutrition that make sure that they are fed make sure they are fed well mm -hmm. and that this is what it is you don't have an option to go and do this so as we've been able to be educated and get into a different tax bracket you know you're losing your way on what you're eating so now you have all of these box meals coming in the house you got all of these frozen meals mm -hmm. coming in the house you got all this fast food coming in the house because you've arrived and you're killing yourself faster than if you wasn't. So I'd rather live long and live moderate than, as they say, half to half yeah. <laughs> and die um, <laughs> faster. That's it. Um, um, I, I want to uh, piggyback off what, what you're saying. Um, uh, that aspect of of, of, um, of making what, what what making what is needed for the family. Um, you also have you also have a, a whole another aspect where our women um, are the spiritual mediums. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by the spiritual mediums is that they always knew or had an intuition for what was needed. Mm -hmm. Our grandmothers and our grandfather, you remember your aunt or your grandmother always saying, um, hey, now I see that coming now. Now you need to do this. You need to... We, we have to go back. Our, our, our black women have an intuition to let you know, hey, look, we need to make this change. If our males have to start paying attention to that, they have to start seeing that. The, the, the husband, the boyfriend, if the wife is coming and saying, hey, we need to make this change, you got to start hearing what she's saying because she knows what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. I want I want to add to add that. Good point. Thank you. Yeah. And Tonya Evans, thank you for joining us tonight at the roundtable where we have Mr. Vegan Love Culture himself, Marathi Howie, who's educating us. I mean, this is his ministry. He's definitely showing us different methods to the madness so to speak when it comes to our health um pratina just said thank you for that knowledge she appreciates that you're very welcome definitely definitely so okay so here's a here's an interesting question because Marathi, you kind of mentioned it at our event that happened a couple of weeks back in regards to how and i think you kind of illuminated on it briefly here in regards to how this vegan lifestyle culture that you're doing has really helped you in a man sort of way. Okay. <laughs> so I would just sit back and I won't sit back cross right. my ankles. <laughs> I was I was I was thoroughly impressed though when you said that because I mean that's something in which I think we as as a culture, especially brothers, we have a we have a tendency in which we don't go to the doctor and we don't want to talk about the things that are keeping us from fulfilling our desires in a positive way, right. especially with our mates. Right. So thank you for mentioning that. But I, I think you need to talk about that as well. Because man, when he said that, yeah. I just turned around, looked at my wife, and I said, <laughs> uh, that's what I'm talking about. That, but that's serious. That's that's yeah. serious as far as what you're saying about how you live this life day. 
because you sharing that with us. You didn't have to, but you did. And I definitely want you, you know, share share that with our people. Because oh, when I said that, Charlie Toons popped on. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. Shouts out to Charlie Toons. Charlie. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. I'm I'm be quiet. I'm staying my place at the table with the men. However, it is six fifty two. So, Mr. Mm-hmm. Marathi, mm-hmm. dealing with and talking about um, our kings maintaining their uh, manhood and their healthy sexual life, yeah. Yeah. Um, are there um, particular um, greens mm-hmm. that they can start to implement? And of course, not as a quick fix, but I'm just saying to implement into their diets, starting to pursue being and having more earth based, plant based. Mm-hmm. Okay. And share that definitely because Charlie too deals with that area when it comes to, you know, for all intents and purposes like sex and she's an educator about it as well as she deals with, you know, different things. And she, her, that's, and that's, I think it's so ironic that I said that and she, she popped, popped on. on. That means so, it's meant to be. Yeah, it's meant to be. So go ahead and share, brother. So she can take that back to her people as well. You know, we educate people now. That's what we do. Okay. Um, well, first of all, um, I, I, this is strictly for for the men. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, my I tell I say this all the time jokingly. Um, my lifestyle is my Viagra. Once you realize and understand that 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 the the very earth that you walk on is your life force, mm-hmm. and once you connect to that. Everything else wakes up. Mm. Um, I mentioned that putting the wrong foods within this soul. Um, in Hebrew, soul and the human organs are synonymous. Mm. Okay, so that it becomes a whole different definition when you now listen when you hear that soul and the in the human organs are synonymous because it said you can't see your soul. You cannot look inside of your body and see your human organs. And so when that soul gets clogged up, the part of the soul is the penis. Mm -hmm. It is a blood vessel. Mm -hmm. The blood has to travel over 300, I forgot how many miles, and it has to travel all the way throughout the body. If there's no blood flowing to your penis, it is not getting up. Point blank period. Okay. Why does the penis not get up? Because people are, because men are clogging their bodies up with dead animals, sugars, artificial flavorings, and not getting up to do nothing with their life. They're growing these these tummies that are so big to the point where they can't even satisfy their mates. Mm. And I want to be honest. I want I want to be honest while while I'm on here. Brothers, if your wife or your girl will be honest with you, if you cannot conquer her in the bed, there's a part of her that she does not respect about you. I'm just being real about it. I'm not. And as a queen, I will second that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not being. I'm not being. Hashtag facts. Right. <laughs> no. No. That is true. I'm not, I'm not being funny. Absolutely. I'm not being anything yeah. because she's satisfying you. You know, we can come very easily. Mm-hmm. But what are you doing to satisfy her if you're not keeping yourself or you keep your manhood in place? Now, you're being taught that if you don't eat meat, that you're not going to be a man. But that very meat that you're eating is taking away your manhood. There you go. So what we have to understand and know is that when you go back into the earth where your life force is, it's going to bring life to your penis. I don't have a problem in that area. And I don't have a problem not only because of that, but because I get up and I work out. I'm going to drink me some beer every once in a while. I'm going to drink me some wine. But guess what? You see me on the treadmill. Just show do. You see what I do? I- I'm going to get that out of my system. I'm not going to let that sit on me. And I eat from the life force in which I came from. Once you do that, you're okay. So to answer your question, any part of that earth that you're going to get it from, especially the watermelon, Especially the avocado, mm-hmm. especially the cucumber, especially the papaya, especially the um, I'm, I'm missing something. The apple, the strawberry. I can keep naming things that can continue to bring that life force back down there, mm-hmm. right? 
what we have to get out of is thinking that, oh, I'm not a man because I don't eat meat. That is a total lie. You are not a man because you're eating too much meat and it's taking away your life force down there by your penis. So I hope I answered that question in the best way I can. So ladies, I hope you had that um, list so you can buy your man some avocados, some papaya, strawberries, yeah. Yeah. apples, um, watermelon, watermelon, seeded. Watermelon. seeded. seeded water. What is going on sidebar? I grew up, I didn't eat, I grew up, as I said it earlier, we didn't eat watermelon before June and we didn't eat it after August. And we eat, ate watermelons with seeds. Every time I go to the store, they're all seedless. Seed what is, is that? That's crazy. Um, well, you have to. There's a certain place where you can get it from. Um, in Canapolis, I, I, I'm, I'm actually doing a watermelon challenge right now that's going to end on the 17th, where I told people to, hey, eat as many watermelons as you can and make sure it can be seed, I mean, seeded watermelon if you can make it that. But in Canapolis, I want y'all to listen. Fresh Farmers Market in Canapolis, Fresh Farms Market, Canapolis, North Carolina. They keep seeded watermelons. Okay. That's why I get all mine from. They go and get it from Florida and South Carolina. South Carolina, Patience, South Carolina has a, uh, a, 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 a watermelon <laughs> festival. If you go around long enough, you're going to run into those brothers or whoever, even, even whoever, elders out there selling seeded watermelons on the yeah. corner. You got to go and look for those things. You're not going to be able to find them. Yeah, they're, not, store. Store. Yeah, they're not in the store. They're not in the store. And the ones that are in the store, just just heads up, I tried to be kind of romantic because mm -hmm. I had listened to my brother over here about the seeded watermelon and stuff, tried to go to the food line and get a seeded watermelon. Mm -hmm. And that thing, when I cut it open, was rotten on the inside. <laughs> yeah. You know somebody who was hot? Mm -hmm. All the way back up there with two bags full of chopped up rotten watermelon and gave it to him and said, this does not make sense. Right. Your seedless watermelon is nice and bristly and right. crisp, mm -hmm. but your seeded watermelon is messed up. Right. Threw me off. I, I totally messed me up. My Mother's Day breakfast was killed. Mm -hmm. so, um, Charlie too just wanted to chime in with you, bro. I knew this was going to happen. She said the dietary intake is very important in libido. Muscle memory is key. That's right. She said, don't forget citrus fruits mm -hmm. and that pineapple. So mm -hmm. she's with you on it. Why do the two of them get together? You gotta, right. to you gotta come to Charlotte. You gotta come to Charlotte. You're right, Queen. But You're yeah, right. that is something else. And, I, and I'm putting. What's going on in Chicago, Baltimore? What's Oh man, everybody's coming on. Ain't just had no Okay, so I Fresh Farms Market in Canapolis, North Carolina. That's right. Okay, get that seeded watermelon. Aldi's got pretty good ones as well. Aldi's, Aldi's as well. Aldi's. Mm -hmm. okay, we can tell them about Aldi's as well. Man, this thing is crazy. And people are jamming in. What's going on, Chris Digsby? Oh my goodness, my cousin chiming in. Man, what's up, man? Okay, so okay, so they just chimed in. She said, "Hello, how you doing?" Peace Peace nice Baltimore. Baltimore. Closing, man, because, I mean, we should have been for two hours on this one right here. Sure, so, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There you go. Thank you. For it. <laughs> <laughs> be a part. We will have uh, Meraki back on for a part two show. Absolutely. Man, that's what's up. What would you like to close out with them, Meraki? Oh, matter of fact, you got to close out in regards to the upcoming event. you got to tell the masses about that. Mm -hmm. We would be remiss not to talk about it because this is an opportunity in which you've been working on this for a while. And it actually brings all of those elements together in a special way. So tell them about that before we close out, man. Okay. Um. First, I want to I want to speak about the uh, first event that I have coming up at the Macquarie Y off of uh, Betty's Fort Road. Um. It is 3801 Macquarie YMCA from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, this is a free event featuring traditional healing, wellness methods, which um, our ancestors and uh, what we use to maintain our body. So you can come out to that. That's uh, this Saturday coming up at 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and then I have um, the Soul Food, the NC Soul, first annual NC Soul Food Vegan Fest, uh, where we will have the Oprah of veganism, Tabitha Brown. If you don't know who Tabitha Brown is, she's from North Carolina. She's out in, Cal in California. Look her up, Tabitha Brown. She will be in town the first time coming to North Carolina for a vegan fest event. This will be at the um, 1030 Woodward Road at uh, the Heist Brewery um, right off of Graham Street in Charlotte. It's going to be from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. with me, Big Sis, and Lil Bro, uh, Marathi Howie and Latisse Howie will be co-hosting this event. It's going to be a dope event. We're going to have Ayana Gregory there, Dick Gregory's daughter. Oh, You're talking yeah. about the extension of yeah. who Dick Gregory is. Uh, she's going to be out there. She's a singer. 
motivator. Mm -hmm. She's gonna speak about the life that Dick Gregory lived. You're gonna love it. It's gonna be uh it's gonna be a, a family reunion. Double Dutch, uh Tonk, Spades, Dominoes, uh Greens Cook Off. It's gonna be a family reunion, uh, family reunion event. Um come out, it's gonna be beautiful. That's gonna be on the 26th of May. That is um the weekend of Memorial Day weekend on a Sunday. So that's gonna be a dope, dope event. It's let me be honest with you. I think it's already sold out, but come. Yeah, always a good thing. Always a good thing. Yeah, and I never want to say every time I want to be in the field, so we can definitely 100%. see everybody how they're going to and, and not and not this. and not sold out. It, it, you had to register, so it wasn't it was, it was free. Yes, right. But you know, come you know, man, and, and get the feel man. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to have a kids' corner, mm -hmm. uh, um, hopscotch, all that stuff's going to be going on. And how, how, how can they follow you also, bro? Um, you can follow me on Facebook. Uh, oh, wow. Um, my fan page is Marathi Howie, um, which is also my um, my regular Facebook page, but also on um, Instagram, Marathi, M-O-R-A-T-H-I, Howie. Go to my YouTube page, which is Vegan Love Culture. Just put in Vegan Love Culture, as in many cultures. I think y'all see it right there. Yes. Um, I have a uh, I have a interview with Dr. Lamar Price. Dr. Lamar Price is Tiffany Haddish's, if I'm saying her name right. Mm -hmm. Her holistic doctor, Cedric Entertainer. Um, so um, if you watch Atlanta Housewives, if anybody watched Atlanta Housewives, you know that her husband caught cancer. Yes. Okay. Yeah. She went to all the celebrities and said, "Who do I need to bring in holistically to do this?" And it was Dr. Lamar Price. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he came in and put your, put his cancer into remission. I have an interview with him that I did right there. And we spilled out vegan love culture right there. And it's over 3.4 thousand views. Very informative. It's three, it's three parts. Check it out. Okay. okay. That's what's up. Tiffany Pennymon, thank you for joining us at the round table. She said, okay, she definitely want to come and attend the, uh, the vegan soul fest. That's going to be dope. Well, family, we are... Can I yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Go ahead. I, I just want to do one more thing. I want to give you guys my website. Um, okay. my my superfoods that I bring in, I bring these in strictly from Africa, which reverse problems, ailments in the body. Uh, you know a lot about them. Yep. Moringa, Balba, butterfly PT, the strictly for the female reproductive system, gets rid of cysts, fibroids, excessive bleeding, um, cramping, bloating, hormonal imbalances, diabetes. Um, I bring in soursop, which fights off cancer cells, keeping your good cells. If you go to www.vthevegan.loveculture.com, you'll see all the superfoods that I bring in. I bring in an herb strictly for men called Strongman Herb, builds up the prostate, blood circulation, and you will turn in. You'll be ten challenge you'll turn to the Black Panther over there. <laughs> 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 and I will say that, Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Yes, yes. All right, so check this out. Just uh, when we gotta close out. People still coming in, they chiming in. We love it, man. That that means y'all really showing us love. So Terry just said to us, Can you guys get the at the round table mugs? For the table, that way you'll be a and just for that, we'll get you one as well. Okay. That's right, that will get you one. And one quick shout out mm -hmm. um, over the last week and a half, the likes and the follows they've been coming in, they've been flowing in. So, we want to give you all thanks for Thank the you. likes, the follows, the shares. Please continue to like and follow and share. Let everybody know, like you said. Tell your mom and them, mom and them, daddy and them, and cousin and them. We love all them. <laughs> <laughs> this is the People's Podcast. Right That's here. right. That's right. That's right. Shout oh. out to Tangie. Oh man, she just chimed in. Tangie oh, chimed in. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, before we close out, I, I don't know when we close out, but I want to make this. I want to just send this message out to our people. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a saying that says, "Good health is true wealth." Um, we have all the materialistic things in the world. We have. We have we have the biggest spending budget in America. We have all the cars, clothes, nice hairdos, nice haircuts, shoes, and everything. We treat the external parts of our bodies very, very delicately. We make sure that it's okay. But when it comes to the internal part, 
the soul, we treat that like it's nothing. So therefore, if someone says that, hey, let's go get this healthy food, oh, that's too much. Mm -hmm. But that bag, that Prada mm -hmm. bag ain't too much. Mm -hmm. or, that, or that Mercedes Benz that you want is not too much. I love nice things. I love, we are kings and queens. We right. deserve nice things. I love my body 10 times more. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make sure. Ouch, Marathi, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make sure that my body is in order. So I'm here long enough to enjoy those things. I'm building an empire. I want to be here long enough to be able to enjoy it. And we are all building empires. Just be here long enough to enjoy it. So I'm going to tell you, okay, the baby baby chicken eggs and, <laughs> and me going shopping, you know, you didn't have to step on my toes that hard on this show. But um, I'm going to wear my combo and my Tim's when you come on a part two so you don't step on my toes. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so, shout out to uh, Shawar Moore for joining us. Peace to you. Yeah, definitely. And Charlie Two said, hey, if you don't promote us, we won't get anywhere. That's it. And on that note, we got to thank y'all for joining us here at the Roundtable again. It's the People's hey. Podcast with Marathi Howard, Adrian Biddle, Melissa, aka the People in the Dress. See y'all. Peace. Love you. Peace. Love y'all. <laughs>